Hello, so today we're gonna work uh, with a Python library called NumPy. So NumPy is uh, basically a, the like the name is numeric Python. So it's basically a library that's defined for uh, numeric functions or to do numeric computations in Python. Our uh, goal is to get the very basic understanding of NumPy and the use very basic functions in the library that are defined. The library has very extensive functions, uh, but for uh, us, we are only going to gloss over the very basics so that if you come across uh, NumPy in the job or if you need to use it later, you know how to use it and start learning and doing your projects on your own uh, to develop a better understanding of NumPy, okay? So it's a fundamental package that's used in scientific computing in Python. What it is, is basically, you can think of it as a vec uh, vector. So if you remember from uh, basic science, what is a vector? Vector is just, um, numbers without any uh, direction you can say okay uh, so we call it that that thing as a, an array like in programming languages we call a collection of numbers as an array okay oops in um, normal python up until now all that we have seen is a list what is a list is a collection of items, right? So if you remember from lists, so lists can have uh, integers, floats together. And in fact, in a list, you can have other lists as member of a list, right? Lists allow different data types together. They are mutable, meaning you can increase and decrease the size of a list, but they are a little slow. Python itself is a fast language, but lists are slow when compared with arrays. Why? Because arrays allow us to do a function or use a, um, an operation or perform an operation on an array very fast in a linear manner. We do not have to iterate over uh, the list, write a loop or something um to operate on members of a list for example so if you remember when we talked about lists to see each member you have to iterate using a for loop or a while loop right as opposed to that on in lists uh, sorry in arrays uh, you can do operations on the entire array at the same time yes behind the scenes it it's a different uh, uh, animal like how it behaves we are not concerned about that but for us we give one operation and it works on the whole list uh, sorry the whole array okay hence they are faster and more space uh, space efficient the only limitation is that data should be of the same data type meaning as opposed to lists you cannot have floats or integers together with strings and so on all data type will be of the same, whether they are all floats or all integers and so on. Okay. How do you install your um, uh, compiler or your computer may already have it, but if you don't, you just say pip3 install uh, numpy. Okay. Hit, I already have installed NumPy, so when you hit enter, it will start installing and so on. I have already installed it, so it says it's already satisfied, right? Although my version is older as compared to a newer version, but for this class, I mean, I'm okay because whatever I do with NumPy, that's enough for me, okay? And then once you've installed it, how do you use it inside uh, your Python files. So inside your Python files, you write this line. 
So first you say import, then package name, numpy as some name here. Okay. And then you use this name to call the functions of this library, which is numpy. So for instance, I always use like descriptive names. So for numpy, I use np, you can use nm, ny, whatever, right? So npy, then whatever function you want to use, you will use this name dot and then give the function name of this library, right? So this is the first line that will be in top of your Python file, okay? And then all you, the code that you need to write will be down here. Okay, so what is uh, NumPy? Like we said, it's an array. Like it works, uh, the basic structure is an array, which is a homogeneous container, meaning whether they're homogeneous, meaning that it's all integers or all floats and so on of numeric elements. If you have strings in there or you try to have strings, it will convert them into num their numeric values and store them as numerics, okay? How do you create an array? In NumPy, the function is array. So remember, np is the name of the uh, library that you said, dot, and then array. And then you can give it the object. Object meaning you can give it a list, you can give it uh, an integer, an element, anything that you want to give, you can give it that here. And then you have some other optional elements, okay? that we have, we're gonna discuss later, but for now, to create a NumPy array, you give it the array command, and then after the parenthesis starts, you give it the object. Let's look at the example here. So first line, we said you have to import the NumPy library as something. We use it as n, uh, sorry, as np. Then down here we are saying, or we are creating an array, and what's the object that we have passed? The object is a list of three elements. Remember square brackets indicate that it's a list and the three elements are one, two, three. When you execute this line, the result is an array is created with this object or these members. It happens that the members are a list. Members are integers. In this line down here, what are we doing? Again, we are creating an array with a list object and the members are integer, integer, float. But we just said that an array is a homogeneous container of numeric elements, meaning everything or every element needs to be of the same data type, homogeneous. So when you create this array, what happens is that this one two integers are transferred into or transformed into 1.0, 2.0 and 3.0, right? Similarly, what are we doing here? Now the object that we are passing is a list and the members of the list are what? Another list of two members, which is one, two and another list. So you have a list and the members of a list are one list, another list. You can create it, it will just create the array. No problems, okay? As long as all the elements are integers, you can pass one list, two list, integers, floats, it will create the array, okay? Of different dimensions and we're gonna talk about that later also and show you like a couple of examples. Now what are we doing here? So here we're just creating a normal Python list and what are the members of the list? Those are in a range. Remember if the range command is given like this, it starts from a zero and first to omit. So starts from zero, first to omit is 10, so the range is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 9, okay? So here, we just created a list 
in variable x when you try to check the type of that variable it, it says that you just created a list right so the class of this variable called x is list if you try to do this thing in numpy so you say create a numpy's array of the same range so it will create the same list but the data type is created as an array when you try to check uh, the type of y you will say or you will see that it's in numpy n dimensional array it can be a one dimensional array two dimensional array three dimensional so n means whatever dimensions you gave numpy created that array as those many dimensions so here it's a one dimensional array okay now comes the interesting or the main part why we need numpy so look at this operation up here so what are we doing x asterisk asterisk 2 so if, if you remember 2 asterisk means raised to the power so x was a list of these members can you do or if this is the list if we give this command what we are intending to do is this uh, like uh, get a square of each element right but since x was a list we cannot do this if you remember list if we want to do something like this we have to write a for loop or a while loop iterate over each member and then um, square that member or raise to the power of two each member individually inside the loop right however since y is in numpy array we can compute or we can do this operation on that array at simultaneously with the just one command so what did we do we said y to the power of 2 what was y y was 0 1 2 3 result is 0 to the power of 2 is 0 1 to the power of 2 is 1, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, 3 to the power of 2 is 9, and so on. Okay? Hence, I just showed you that if you try to do an operation on a list, you cannot. You need to write a for loop. In a NumPy array, you can do that very easily. Okay? And very fast and efficiently look at this code now what is a a is a list and each member of a list is a string right since their code uh, used in single quotes now what's the next command we're just saying create a new variable called int a int and what is that variable that variable holds a numpy array you pass which object you pass a list called a that list happens to be a list of strings so the next element or the next element that you're passing is a data type and if you look up here if you pass an object and the next is a data type then this function array knows that i will take this object create an array of this type that's what's happening here so it takes array a which is of strings uses or changes transforms their data type to an integer when you try to check the type of int it says it's an undimensional array when you try to see it you just type the variable name it shows you that i created an array of one two three four so notice the difference up here and down here so these are converted as integers because you said take this list convert them into integers and make it an array now this command instead of int we are saying create an array of floats and what i am passing you is this list again the same list so hence the result compare the results one two three four as opposed to 1.0 2.0 3.0 4.0 because you said create an array of 
floating point numbers. Okay. So that's the basic how you create an array in NumPy. So now we're going to see different operations that you can do on the whole array. Okay. So what is A? A is this array from 1 to 3, 4 up till 9. B we say create B as a NumPy array and now the range function has three elements. So these three elements, if you remember the range function, it starts from this number. This is the first number to omit, meaning that the range is from 1 to 18. And this is the step. So it starts from 1 with a step of 2, 3, meaning so 1 plus 2 is 3. Then the step is 2. So from 3, you jump to 5. 5 step 2 is 7 and so on. And first to omit is 17, uh, sorry, 19. So it will stop at 17 because you cannot have 18 because the step after 17 is 17 plus 2 is 19. But we cannot have 19 because first to include, first to exclude, step. So that's how this range function is include, exclude, step. Okay. So when you create B, check B, this array is created. Okay. You check the length of A, this array up here. Length of B, they're both the same length. Then if two arrays or vectors are of the same length, you can do an A over B. So it will take one over one, answer is one. Two over three is 0. 0.6667. Three over five is 0. 0.57 and so on the whole array meaning if you want to have divisions between arrays their length needs to be the same okay if you give different length arrays you can get an error one over one is 1.0 oh. why why didn't it say one over one is one and the next is decimal the next is decimal Remember, arrays are of this homogeneous type. So if any member comes in decimal, it will change all of them into decimals. Hence, 1 over 1 will not be 1. It will be 1.0. Okay. So like I said, it array contains only one data type. Right. So what are we doing here? So again, so on the right side is the output. I just put it on the slide so you guys can see for later. So import numpy as np, okay. Then a is you're creating an array of these members 1 and 12.0. When you check the data type, print this is type, right? a dot type or d type, you get this output, this line. That it's a floating point number. 64 bit floating point number. So array is stored as floats. So one was integer, one was float, but it stores it as floats. When you try to print each member individually, A is zeroth member and first uh, first member. So you will see 1.0 and 12.0. Okay. So hence the point that I was making that it contains them of the same data type converted the 1 to 1 1.0 okay let's look at another example what's happening here so here now you have one string so integer string float you pass 3 to the array array is created check the data type all of them are now this data type. What is this data type? So this is essentially uh, like compiler stores it as a special data type of uh, Unicode characters. 
So U stands for Unicode. Uh, how does it store them? It stores them as um, because of this B. When we said B is a string, it will make this a Unicode character, meaning it will deal this as a string, this as a string. Okay. But are they actually strings? No, because if you remember uh, from our beginning lectures, each string has a numeric value that computer stores in terms of ones and zeros. Here we are, you can think of it as Unicode. Uh, so the easier way to say is that B will have a numeric code attached to it. One will have a numeric code. 12.0 will have a numeric code. All those numeric codes are stored. But the operations that you do on them will be dealt as uh, not normal mathematics, but adding the numeric codes. For example, when we try to print these, like the 0th element, which is 1, B, 12, you can see the result is straightforward, right? We think that this is an integer, this is a string, this is a float, but they are actually not. How or why? Let's look at this example. So now here, what are we doing? We are saying take one, add B to it. Can one and B added? No, they cannot, right? If you remember our initial lecture from string, if you try to add two strings, what happens? They are concatenated, right? Meaning they are, they are brought together. So when we say 1 and B, add them together, the result is 1B. So concatenation. Now we are saying B and 12.0. So it will just put B in front of sorry, uh, B and 1, because A0 is 1. So it will bring B first, this member second. Now take B, oh no, sorry, second member is 12.0, take that, add 0th element, which is 1 to it. So the result is 12.0, 1. So 12.0, which is A2, a0 is 1, 12.01, this line. Why is that? Because 12.0 is, this is all Unicode characters. They are not integers or floats that we saw the data type up here. If it was int64 or float64, then it would be different. But here, since it's Unicode, meaning all these are dealt as strings. So yes, you can do these numeric computations, but this is actually not numeric computations. They are dealt as Unicode characters. And when characters are brought together, they are just concatenated. Okay. Similarly, 1, 2, 3 is a list. When you try to add a list to a list, you get two, like one long list. So it will just repeat that if B is an array, then you try to add it. The result is two, four, six, like one plus one, two plus two, three plus three will be two, four, six. Because now B is an array. Okay. The next thing indices. They just work like normal indices that we have seen until until now. So again, range starts from here, first to include, first to exclude, make it as an array. This is the array we can say here. Now you can just give indices starting from zero. Again, first to include, first to exclude. So zeroth element is one. First element is 2. Do we need to go beyond that? No, because first to include is the uh, 
second index index 0 index 1 exclude index 2 so your end result is this array which is 1 and 2 because of this um, indices that we give index indexes or indices okay you can check conditions in this array everything that is greater than 5 so if you do something like this it will give false 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 if you give it in an index it will give you the array where those indices hold true okay again pretty straightforward stuff that we talked about when we talked about list and indices so the index cost concept basically follows the normal python rules okay so we talked about uh, nd array or not uh, n dimensional array right what does that mean so when you define an array right so here we are giving it two lists so list one is this and the outer brackets are basically the one long list that has two members and those two members is first member is itself a list second member is again a list from five to eight okay when you see the array it shows something like this when you type it says that it's an undimensional uh, n-dimensional array when you check the shape or you say a dot shape it gives you this answer what is this answer that means that I have stored this array as two rows and four columns so row column format is followed in numpy arrays or in most programming languages everything is stored in row column format so row comes first column comes second you can think of it as something like this so now you have two dimensions rows and columns okay row 0 row 1 column 0 column 1 column 2 column 3 okay so again indices work the same if you give only one index so a1 a is this thing when you say 1 a1 it goes to row 1 and it prints out the whole row 5 6 7 8 if you get, give row and column so it goes to that row column is 1 member is 6 you can give it this way like row column indices in separate square brackets or in the same answer is the same so it's the same or a, another or similar convention to give row column format for the index now what are we saying so row 1 and column start from 1 go to first to exclude remember it's like a range first to include first to exclude so it only needs column 1 and column 2 so go to row 1 column 1 is 6 column 2 is 7 so 6 7 is the answer now go to row 1 column is all of them so nothing here so row 1 all columns 5 6 7 8 then this one says no or like all rows and columns 1 and 2 so all rows so first this row column 1 and 2 is 2 and 3 that's here then the next is go to the next row column 1 and 2 6 and 7 and so on so just to show you how to use indices in one dimensional arrays that we've seen back here and if you have two dimensional arrays you can use row column format 
you can go higher order uh, dimensions as well three dimension four but that's not easier to uh, imagine so for us two dimensional is enough okay to understand then using when you have dimensions there is a function called reshape okay so first why do we need these one dimensionals two dimensionals and then these reshape functions and so on so in linear algebra mostly or in linear algebra you work on matrices okay or you can work in scientific computations on matrices these functions that are defined they work very efficiently for matrices so that's the why part the how part is so if you have an array so so by now you should know what this line means again range is first to include first to exclude meaning the numbers here are 1 through 10 created as an array put it in this variable you check the variable 1 through 10 okay now we're say, saying take that variable and reshape this into what two rows five columns okay good enough so this array is created two rows row one row two or row zero row one okay and these are the columns column one two three four five okay Similarly, you can give it five columns, two rows. So one, uh, sorry, five rows, two columns. First row, second row, third row, fourth, fifth, and columns one and two. Okay. Now what are we saying? Reshape it into three rows and four columns. So three by four is how many elements? Twelve elements. How many elements does this one have? Our array has only 10 elements, but we are saying put them in 12 spots. Can this be done? No, it cannot because you only have 10 elements. Hence, the compiler says I cannot do it. I cannot reshape this array. Okay. Point being, whatever array you have, you want to reshape it into different rows and columns. Those should be divisible by the, or those should be exactly divisible or come exactly in those spots if you cannot it will not fill the extra ones by those elements or the existing elements okay so reshape only works if your uh, members are of the uh, same cardinality okay Then to initialize arrays, this was basically showing you that uh, our range is again, it will create an array from this range. What did we do here? We created, the, we gave the range command first, then created an array. Combination of this command is our range, meaning create an array from this range. So yes, you can do this or do this okay answer is the same so the array is created with these from zero oh, sorry zero to first to exclude is 10 that range now what did did we do here we created an array and in and that big array we are giving one array because a range another array and another array so the result is a big array of one array two array three arrays by the way there are parentheses and brackets missing here because i ran out of space then you can create an array of five ones by just giving it this command five zeros just give it this command okay similarly you can create two rows of uh, five ones 
two rows of five zeros. So these commands, right? Just to show you how, how you can create or initialize empty arrays. Why or what's the purpose of showing you this? Because in scientific computation, sometimes you need to generate this type of data. Another example is if you want to create an identity matrix. If you remember from math, identity mat matrix has diagonal ones everything else is a zero right you can create that with five rows first row second third fourth fifth rows uh, fifth row since it's identity all the diagonal have to be one so the columns are five also okay Then operations we already talked about that if you have an array defined, if you say that array times two, it will take each member multiplied by two. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So op operate this times two on this whole array. Now operate raised to the power of two on this array. So this was the original. So 2, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, which is down here, right? Similarly, if you want to add two arrays, they have to be of the same length, same uh, row column format. If not, for instance, our array C is not of the same cardinalities or same rows and uh, columns so it, you will get an error that you cannot add a and c because um, their shapes don't match okay a's and b's shape match because that they are the same so you can multiply them you can divide them you can divide one over the other the other over the first and so on okay so pretty straightforward uh, operations What did we do in the first line? We in the first line we created twenty five. So from one to twenty, sorry, zero to twenty four is the twenty five elements. Put them in an array. Then we said reshape it into five rows and five columns. That's what this created. Then the new command is a where. Where is like a function that you can apply on a or on an array here the array is five uh, sorry uh, c so we are saying apply this where function on c with this condition what's the condition condition is if this thing is true write this else write this if you remember our if else uh, so this is just like that that operate on this uh, array this condition if condition is true do this else do this so c mod 5 if the remainder is 0 of dividing by 5 if the remainder comes 0 write a y else write an n so anything divided by 5 uh, so 0 divided by anything is 0 so you get a y 1 divided by 5 mod uh, is 0 no so these four, when you divide by five, you get n's. So only when the multiples of five will get a remainder zero. So only y's come in those. Everything else is an n, the else condition. Okay. Then in some projects, in some uh, uh, problems, you need to create or generate random numbers. How do you do that? You give or use the random command. Then you can create different types of distributions as well of those numbers. So here we are saying, um, what's the command? Yeah, so command is create random numbers in a normal distribution the mu or the mean is 5, standard deviation is 2, and I need only 2 members. 
so average is 5 standard deviation is 2 size is 2 this is what's created here we are saying what same the average or the mean is 5 standard deviation is 2 but now we need two rows and three columns and this thing is generated so all these random numbers are generated okay similarly here we used a normal distribution you can use an exponential distribution again two rows three columns scale is 2.5 uh, meaning that's the exponential scale you get these members okay if you don't want an exact distribution you just you can just use a um, rand int function so rand int basically takes these uh, elements your lower bound your higher bound it can be none the size how many size you want the type you want an integer or float and so on so here we say lower bound is uh, is zero like it starts from zero when you give only um, one bound that's the upper bound so zero up to first to exclude is two size is ten you get this array here it starts from zero to 5 so it will own, generate a random integer in this range from 0 to 5 excluding 5 and the size is 2 rows 4 columns 2 rows 4 columns and so on okay so here you give the first and upper bound sorry the lower bound and upper bound uh, so start from here first to exclude is this 2 rows 4 columns get this thing so these numbers are or integers are generated randomly this is the function okay then to iterate if you have um, to iterate on each row you can write a for loop uh, it will up uh, iterate row wise like the first row second row third row and if you want to operate on each member you can use the flat function so for each element in that whatever you created the array if you say c flat it will take each element it will go row wise like six seven three two five eight one one eight and do whatever you want to do with it here we are just printing them on the screen in each separate line because the print function will print cursor comes down print cursor comes down it will play it, uh, uh, print this thing okay again the basics function showed you how to use numpy what numpy is the powerful uh, nature of numpy that you can operate on the whole array at with just one operation uh, so there are many functions to manipulate arrays you can concatenate them you can get de-split them stack them again our purpose is not to learn each function or how each function behaves just to show you that you have this uh, library at your disposal very powerful library used almost everywhere uh, wherever you need numeric computations you can use mean, median, standard deviation, different types of functions um, just in this manner. The whole list is on this slide. Okay. And this is the site uh, where this tutorial is basically coming from. Like all the slides, I made this tutorial. So there is a quick start guide here for all those functions that are there. Okay. In case you're interested. So that basically includes. Uh, um, like finishes our lecture for today.